Amen. Good evening, good evening, uh, family, and welcome to Mana TV live streaming on Facebook. Just want to take this time and appreciate you all, wonderful viewers. It has been a long day not meeting you around uh, 13 hours, 15 minutes, but I trust that you had a great and an awesome time throughout the, the, the day after our morning devotion. And thank you so very much. I really appreciate that you're logging in and we're going to have our time this evening uh, right after Easter. Tonight, I want to talk about uh, a subject that is very much important and that is going to encourage you. And uh, the title is, All that is in the house is yours. All that is in the house is yours. Remember, our theme is um, peace amidst the storm. Peace amidst the storm. And then our key scripture being Mark chapter 11, 35 to 41, where we know when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. And they left the crowds, and uh, the, but a few boats followed them. And while in the middle of the lake, a fierce storm arose and water was gushing into the boat until the disciples were shaken of fear and they went walking up as he was lying in the cushion at uh, the back of the, the boat. And they woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? He arose, he rebuked the storm, and there was a great calm until they say, what manner of man is this? This is our theme, family. During our lockdown, we're talking about peace in the midst of the storm. And may the peace of God cover your heart and mind. Even this evening, throughout the day, I trust that the Lord has been so good to you. And I'm saying may the peace of God cover you and strengthen you. We're just coming from the Easter weekend. And the Easter weekend is a very wonderful time for us as believers. And it's a wonderful time for everybody because what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary was not just for believers and was not just for those who have already believed, but it is for the world, it's for everybody. That is why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We just came out of the Easter weekend and there's a lot for us to glean out of the experience of Easter. And we have shared a lot of messages. We have shared the word of God uh, on this platform. Uh, you, you, I shared with you and other men and women of God shared with you. But I want us today to continue uh, taking advantage of the work of the cross, taking advantage of what Jesus did for us. Because in the death of the cross, one biggest benefit of every one of us is the fact that salvation was given to us our sins were forgiven the door was open like we know that the the curtain in the temple was torn in two and we know that god almighty who lived in the holy of holies opened up and said now i want to have a relationship with men through my son jesus christ no more through the order of the priest like in the old testament but now we all can approach the throne of grace with confidence to receive mercy and help in time of need. So that is one greatest benefit of the work of the cross, that we can be saved, that our sins can be forgiven, that we can have a relationship with God, not just at a distance, but having God dwelling in us and us in him. That is why I understand the Apostle John clearly when he said in first john chapter number three and verse one behold what manner of love the father has bestowed unto us that we be called the children of god that's an amazing type of love for us to be called the children of god for that for us to be loved and to be brought into a relationship with god so god did not just come to take away our hardships to take away our pains to relieve us from stress no he came and loved us so much and brought us into a relationship. So you and I, we become children of God. Those who believe they become children of God. And if we are children, then we also automatically become heirs of God. 
and joint heirs with our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want us to I want to illustrate this relationship through the story of the prodigal son, like it is recorded in Luke chapter number 15. You know, when we look at this story, you will realize that here the Pharisees and the teachers of law were complaining about Jesus Christ that he cannot be a prophet, he cannot be the Messiah. How can he sit and eat with sinners? Because Jesus, you know, he, he did not segregate sinners. He, in fact, he went even into sinners' houses like he went to Zacchaeus' house, you know. And that confused the Pharisees and the teachers of law because of their self-righteousness. So they thought Jesus cannot be the Messiah. He cannot be the Son of God. He cannot even be a prophet because how can he fellowship with sinners? Now Jesus took a journey and in that journey he began talking to them uh, very powerfully about uh, taking a journey with them. And that journey, he started talking about the lost sheep. He started talking about the lost coin. And all he was dealing with here, it was not just about the sheep, it was not just about the coin, but you know, it culminated to where he spoke about the son who left home, the son who left his father's house. And we normally call him the prodigal son. We know he said to his father, give me all that belongs to me. And when the father released that which would belong to him as an inheritance after the death of his father, so the man took the inheritance even before his father died. And then he went his way. And we know how he spent everything and, uh, uh, and lost everything and finally found himself so in need and so poor that he even wanted to eat that which pigs were eating. And now we know how he came back to his senses. And when he came back to his senses, then he came back to the father. And when he came back to the father, the father saw him from a distance, recognized him, ran toward him and hugged him, kissed him and commanded that a fetish calf be slaughtered and that he be given new clothes to dress up. And that whole thing did not land well in the heart of the son or the elder son who was home. And that is what we want to look at today, the elder son's response, because he complained and said, my father, I've been with you. I've been faithful. I've not been like this, your son who took everything, who went his way, but he's coming back now. You are slaughtering the fittest calf. You are throwing a party and you have never thrown even a single party for me. And you know what? That's where the words of the father comes now to say, my son, all that is in the house, it's yours. All that is in the house, it's yours. So it is yours to slaughter at any time and enjoy it. But why did the elder son have to complain? Why didn't the elder son realize that uh, being an obedient son, all that was in the house was his? Friends, I want you to know that this is the state of many of the church, many of believers today. We are in the house, we are children of God, but we are not taking advantage and not benefiting from all that which is in the house. I want us to read, therefore, the book of Galatians chapter number four, and we are going to read from verse one to verse number six, and it reads, now I say, I say to you that an heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ from a slave. Though he is the master of all, you must mark that, he does not differ from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of the woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. We might receive adoption as sons. And because now we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, which is Father. Now, we see this, the, 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 the Apostle Paul here trying to tell us uh, why 
the elder son did not enjoy or appreciate all that was in the house which was his. And he says, look, even an heir, while still a child, does not differ from a slave, does not benefit from that which is his, but is in the hands of tutors and stewards until a time and a day appointed of the father. And he then says, so were we, you know, so were we. Uh, but God, through his son, he came when we were under the law, being uh, tutored and being under the stewardship of the law, that God came through his son, Jesus Christ. And then he gave us what is so valuable. You know, he gave us sonship. We were adopted to be children of God. And when we talk of sonship here, yes, it's being a child of God. But at the very same time, it talks of a mature son who is able to take advantage of the inheritance. That is why in the, in, in the Jewish re, uh, uh, culture, there is a time of adoption where a son is being adopted. And this does not talk of a son who was not a biological son of the father, but he, he is a biological son. But there comes a time where the father or where there's a ceremony where he's adopted. And when they talk of adoption here, they're talking about being installed, being uh, given the authority now to begin to exercise and to run the business like the father will run the business, even in the presence of the father. And that is what ensures also continuity. Now, this is what we are talking about when we talk about uh, being children of God. Being children of God, you can be a child, but you must mature to be a son so that you are, you know, as a child, you are concerned about uh, 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 little things or you are concerned about things that benefits you only. You know, that's why when you look at children, even in the natural children, there's an element of selfishness. They want to have things for themselves. But when you become a son, you begin to understand the heart of the father. You begin to understand the, 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 the father's business so you can run the father's business. But then, how do we begin to inherit and take advantage of the inheritance that God has given us? How do we start benefiting from all that which is in the house? Because it is in the house and all that is in the house it's yours. It's mine. How do we benefit from it? Because I don't want to take it for granted that just being children of God, we all are aware that all that is in the house is ours. Not only aware, but we are able to take advantage of that which is in the house. I know many of us, we know that uh, all that is in the house is ours. We know that we are heirs of God. We know that we are joined heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is a song that we sing. Can we then come to where we can handle that which God has made available for us? Like when we talk of an heir while still a child, that he does not differ from a slave. Can we arise therefore and become sons that are taking advantage of that which God has made available for us? And saying that, beloved, I'm talking about the finished work of the cross Number one, it brings salvation. And because of salvation, it gives us also power over sin. As I shared with you over the weekend, that uh, sin no longer has dominion over us because we are not under the law, but we are under grace. So, we, you know, we are set free from the law of sin and death. We are totally set free. So the Bible then, or, or the Apostle Paul even encourages us that uh, we should no longer present our bodies as instruments of unrighteousness or as instruments that works against the things of God. But we must give our bodies, we must give ourselves, that is our skills, that is our talents, our abilities, our knowledge. We must give our entire selves as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, like I'm saying today, I want you to know how to benefit and how to take that which is in the house, like the elder son, how to slaughter a calf, how to throw a party in the house, knowing that all that which is in the house, it's yours, so that you are not envious of the prodigal son when he comes home. You know, it reminds me uh, uh, stories, you know, over the years when people have, have just given their lives to the Lord, you know, they, they, they experience miracles just like that. You know, they, they, they pray for this, it happens. They come for prayer, it happens just like that. Until those who have been born again for a long time say, ah, no, but this is not fair. 
you know, sometimes it goes to an extent where you find that uh, a, a sister was in the church for quite some time, is not experiencing a, a blessing of marriage soon, and then somebody just got born again, the next thing they get married. You know, you hear somebody complaining, complaining and say, but this is not fair. After I have served God so much, and all of a sudden, some people, they just came yesterday, and things are happening, and it's not happening with me. You know what? That is the spirit of the elder son. I am in the house. All that which is in the house is for it's mine. But sometimes, being in the house, you are not able to take advantage of that which is in the house. You are not able to receive that which you are already given. Because according to God, the word of God says, in fact, it's the apostle Peter who says, by his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. You see, but many of the children of God, this becomes a song, this becomes a scripture or a verse, but it never become practical in their lives. It never come to where they can handle it with their hands. And that's what I want to talk about. And that's what I want to encourage you to know that God does not only want you to sing about it or to talk about it, but God wants you to benefit from it because it is yours. It is released. You are an heir. And as an heir, you must be able to enjoy that which God has made available for you through the work of the cross. Now, we'll go back a little bit to Genesis. In Genesis, God said something to Adam. He said to him, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And I want us to look at that, that, uh, uh, that, that those words. He said, be fruitful and multiply. And he gave him the responsibility to cultivate, to till the garden. You know, to till the garden. So in your fruitfulness, you must be able to till or to cultivate. Let me use the word cultivate. Because cultivate here, it talks about making fruitful. You know, you make fruitful, cultivate uh, the, 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 the land. It's like when you have a, a piece of land which lies fallow and it is not uh, plowed, it is not worked on, it is not cultivated. It might, it might be fertile, but you don't benefit from it because though fertile, uh, it cannot just give you crops. You know, there must be something that you do. You must be able to cultivate it. That is bring out the power, the, 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 the fruitfulness that is in this piece of land and let it begin to nourish you and begin to uh, prosper you. And I want to talk about this because, you know what? Here I'm not talking about a piece of land, but I'm talking about you as a child of God because you also can be a fallow ground. You also can be a fallow piece of land full of potential things can germinate in you you have the potential you are so fat that things can germinate great things in fact great things can germinate from you that is why i want you to know whoever you think they they, they became great in life that greatness did not come from outside that greatness came from within because when you were born god loaded you with greatness he loaded you with gifts with talents with abilities and even with the ability to learn you know and and the, the, that's why you're unique your way of doing things is just unique but do you know to cultivate yourself cultivating yourself because jesus christ the son of god has made you now through his death on the cross a child of god but for you to benefit from that god says no i hear you asking me but what do you expect of me to do cultivate it i've put it in you dig you are the if, if you are the gold mine dig it out of you cultivate it take it out of yourself so this is what i want you to see a uh, child of the living god that you know what god has put stuff in you god has laid greatness in you god has put in you all the breakthroughs that you will ever need that is why during this season of the lockdown i want to encourage you because many people are complaining because they cannot move from their houses they cannot go to this place they cannot work that out and all like that uh, let me encourage you to know that th the lockdown can be a serious uh, uh, punishment if you look at it that way because you will say if it was not of the lockdown if it was not of the lockdown, if it was not of the lockdown, as if the lockdown is your enemy. Meanwhile, you are, our enemy is not the lockdown, but our enemy is the pandemic. Our enemy is COVID-19. But you will end up thinking, 
uh, the lockdown is your enemy. Why? Because you feel your hands are tied. You feel you cannot move, you cannot do anything. But I want to bring this to you. As God says, um, be fruitful, multiply, cultivate, you know, make fruitful the land, you know, and that land here, we're talking about yourself. Did you know that uh, you have great things in you? You've got awesome things, and I'm not saying this for you to feel uh, good, but I'm telling you the truth that there's great, there are great things in you, and you must start cultivating it. You must start working it out. Sit it right where you are, in your house. Work on yourself. You, you have your time to work on yourself. You have your time to do an inventory, to you have a time to, to do a, a, an introspection, search yourself. If, in fact, one could even ask you a question, exactly who are you and why are you here? Because, you know, life has got a way of keeping us busy, running up and down. And sometimes even when we are not fruitful, people, some people are crying, I'm, I'm not able to go and work. But they are not even fruitful in their workplaces, you know. And some people, they're always dodging. 10 o'clock, they're working for government, but 10 o'clock, they're no more in the office. Now, somebody says, I cannot go to work. Listen, you, you can be able to cultivate yourself. And if we will take this time and start bringing out things from ourselves, those things that uh, the Easter week uh, uh, has reminded us about, you know, being children of God, being a child of God, it's a great thing. You know, it's a great thing. That's why John says, the world does not know us because it never knew him. You know, it's a great thing. But I'm saying today, start cultivating yourself. One other thing that I've realized, even from... Uh, 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 experts, you know, experts, they come with these figures. They say, you know, a, uh, in a day, about 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts passes our mind in a, day, in a day. And when I look at that, I thought, what? That's too much. And you know, that says it's an average of about 2,500 to 3,000 thoughts that passes our minds every day. Every day. Every day. Mm. Now, that, that in itself, when we talk of thoughts, you must understand, when we talk of thoughts, we talk of even ideas. Thoughts are ideas. There's a lot of things that are coming, lots of pictures that move. You, can you imagine over 2,500 to 3,000 thoughts every hour passing your mind? But the question is, what kind of thoughts are those? Because, you know, the National Science Foundation says 80% 80% of the average person's thoughts are negative. 80% of them are negative. And that is scary. If I have to have 80% of the 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts that are negative, and it says 95% it's a repetition of the thoughts. So if I have a lot of negative thoughts, that means 95% is the repetition of those thoughts. That is why at the end of the day, my negative thinking becomes so much than my positive thinking. And that accounts for why many people fail. You do not fail in life because you are bewitched. You do not fail in life because you are not learned. You do not fail in life because you are born in the wrong place or because you are black or white or because you are Indian or colored. No, you fail in life because of the overwhelming thoughts that comes to you every day and the line of thoughts that you embrace and that are repeated almost 95 percent being repeated and if i have 80 percent of negative thoughts out of the 60,000 to 80,000, if i have 80 percent of that being negative and they have to repeat themselves 95 percent time i'm telling you that is why the end of the day we don't take off and i hear yeah i'm talking about being born again going to church because many people thought if i am born again and go to church and and serve god and pray all shall be well there are people who are praying fervently but they are not successful when i say they are not successful i'm not talking about just material their lives are not portraying the god that they serve their lives are not showing out what god has done i'm not because my life must be a reflection of the finished work of the cross what Jesus made available for me, I must be able to reflect that. And that talks about, I must have victory over sin. I must, you know, I must bear the fruits of the Spirit. 
you know my life must be fruits of the spirit there must fruits of the spirit that manifest in my life now i'm saying in this lockdown what are you doing what are you thinking what are those thoughts that are flying in your mind and what are you doing with all those thoughts how are you cultivating yourself are you just sitting and saying pastor what must i do because these thoughts they come negative thoughts and you know they account for the violence that is happening in in families now that is why they say during the lockdown uh, the rate of gender-based violence went very high why because when people are seated and are thinking negative thoughts now you go where your thoughts goes you do what your thoughts says do and because of that that is why we see negative we see attacks we see fights and all those things meanwhile you were supposed to tap into the power of these thoughts and be able to stand at the door of your mind and say these thoughts no these thoughts yes these thoughts no do you imagine if you have 80 percent of positive thoughts and they repeat themselves 95 percent i'm telling you it does not matter what the enemy can do you will make it and you will be what god wants you to be for the bible says as a man thinks so is he so your witch is not somewhere flying but your witch is in your line of thoughts but today i just wanted to bring that to you tomorrow we will continue and see how we can take advantage of what god has given us through the work of the cross remember child of god that we continue fighting this pandemic and even that you know what the reason other people are not observing this is because they choose to listen to wrong thoughts they choose to listen to people who say, no, this thing, this thing, ah, why this, why this? No, you know what? This is how you feel your mind. I chose to make sure that I take the advices, I take the, the, the guidelines that government has given us, that is stay at home. That is wash your hands regularly with soap, at least for 20 seconds. That is when you go out, put on a mask. And then when you are out, social distance is very much important. And that is to say, when you come back, take off those clothes that you had on, hang them somewhere in the sun, wash yourself. And if you have sanitizers, use them time and again. I take it because while there is no uh, 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 cure for, for COVID-19, but there is prevention. And I'm saying, my dear brother and my sister, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So be full of knowledge, be full of understanding, and God will bless you. And I'm saying to you now, you know what? Let us take this time to pray for those that are sick or that are, 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 are have tested positive and those that are sick in their bodies and pray for our government and pray for our leaders. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we lift before you our leaders, our president, his cabinet. We lift before you our embassies. We lift before you, precious Lord, our frontliners, our doctors, our nurses, all those on 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 essential services we leave them before you lord protect them keep them my lord and god protect their families in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god may it be well with them father we pray for those our brothers and sisters that have tested positive of this virus my lord and god we say brothers and sisters in the name of jesus of nazareth the son of the living god you shall live and not die you shall beat this virus and it shall be well with you in the mighty name of jesus christ the son of the living god make it come out of it victorious by the grace of our god in jesus name my friend you might be watching also you are not born again you have not received jesus as lord and savior of your life i want to give you this time to open your heart for him and what we are talking about will be true even about your life pray with me this prayer and say father god in the name of jesus i surrender my life to you lord jesus come into my heart forgive my sins wash me today be my lord and my savior i thank you lord i am born again i'm a child of god from this day in jesus name amen if you pray that prayer it is well my brother it is well my sister make sure that we continue interacting here and even uh, feeding you with the word of god i just want to take this time and say to you all wonderful viewers thank you so very much for viewing these programs i beg you please make sure that you like it make sure that you share it with others so that we continue encouraging and strengthening each other all that is in the house is yours god bless you